Hello, Global Gardeners. It's Monday. It's that time to start your gardening week live. I think this is such a wonderful time in the morning for me, but just to be with all of you as we talk gardening. Today, I'll be sharing with you a number of my favorite small gardening channels. I'll also be highlighting a number of you and what you're doing with your small gardening channels. And then of course, along the way, we'll be talking gardening and answering questions and sharing lots of information. Let's go ahead and start with Masabi Gal in Zone 3, Minnesota. Wondering about when does one cut down the asparagus fronds? Now, asparagus being a perennial plant that is going to stay in the ground in the same location for year after year relies on the summer growth to put all the energy into the roots so it'll survive through the winter and then pop up again in the spring. So as long as the fronds are green, they are producing energy through photosynthesis into the roots of your asparagus plants. And those strong plants or, or strong roots are what is going to send up the strong spears in spring. So leave the fronds up throughout the whole summer into early fall as long as they are green. But once they start turning brown, that's shut down and there's really no reason to leave them up. I save that as kind of a late winter activity or midwinter, whenever I get around to it. If you're on top of things, do it in autumn. As soon as they turn brown and you're cleaning up your garden, you can go ahead and cut down those fronds. But leave them up as long as they're growing and your plants will be stronger next year. So always a good thought, good question to be asking about those kind of things because I know a lot of us do have questions about it. Gardens Happen says, decided to make a video going over the history of the Buckingham Palace Garden as a sort of tribute to their queen passing. I like that idea. That's an interesting idea. And to all of you in the UK and the Commonwealth, we in the States are, are following this entire week's activities. Our thoughts are with you in the passing of the queen. And it's definitely something that the, the news channels and the newspapers and everybody is covering here because she was a beloved figure all over the world. So gardens happen. I like that idea and uh, look forward to seeing that. And as we talk about small channels, gardens happen is on the list for that. Hello to Bobby Wilson. Hello to D. Hello to Bettina and John. Always nice to see you all here as we roll down Marianne, Marie Angie from Puerto Rico. Thank you for being here. And the Stony Gardener from Ontario, part of our global audience checking in. It's so often to see everybody. Chandy's Garden says, a beautiful week on tap this week in Cincinnati, attending a local perennial swap this coming Sunday. I'm excited about that. That's great. And that's a good way to actually start the show because that's how I'm going to end the show is talking about swaps and sharing and fun things like that. So hope you look forward to a wonderful week. We've got S. Ambrose from Melbourne, Australia. This is just so fantastic. I just love sharing my time with all of you from all over. Christine is in the UK and... Let's see, I'm scrolling down trying to catch up a little bit. We have, and your little dog too, the Garden State. I haven't been to the East Coast in a while, but uh, the Garden State and the East Coast are definitely some of my favorite places to visit. In Wilson in Washington, D.C. is wondering, should raised beds be covered in the winter to keep out weed seed? I don't think so. First off, especially if you live in a place like I live, the wind is going to blow the weed seed in at all times of year. Even if your bed is mulched, weed seed is being blown in on top of that mulch. And so it, the winter is actually the least likely time for many of those weed seeds to be blowing. If you're doing any type of cleanup at all, or if you're cutting your weeds before the seed heads develop, then the seeds aren't even present in winter 
to blow into your, your beds. Instead, I suggest mulching your beds going into winter and then allowing the snow, the rain, the weather, all of those normal climatological activities to just go ahead and rain literally on your beds. They'll help keep your soil moist so that the soil life in the soil can stay alive. Even when the ground is frozen, that bacteria is still in the soil, but they need moisture to avoid being totally destroyed. So I leave my beds open. Now, if you have a particularly wet winter, if you're in a region that doesn't have the snow and the freezing and get months of rain, then yes, covering the beds might be a good idea just so the nutrients aren't leached out of the soil during that time of year that you might not have plants growing there. But I I leave the mulch in place because I use light mulches like the dried grass and the crushed leaves and the straw and they will gradually break down and decompose over time and enrich the surface of the soil. The sun and the weather elements help that process. So I leave it open. Totally up to you. Uh, I don't know many gardeners that cover in the winter uh, other than a mulch, but as, as to the weed seed being the reason, uh, I, I, I really don't think that's much justification because the weed seeds are going to be there and they're everywhere in most of our gardens. Chihuahua is saying good morning and good morning back to you. Watched your harvest right freezer and ex excited about it, waiting for your evaluation. Thank you. And thank you to so many of you. The, the congratulations and the outpouring of affection was wonderful for that video. I got my freeze dryer. I'm in the process. I'm hoping to get it set up and run through the test run today. And I've already got some of my produce ready to go. One of the things I learned in some of my discussions uh, with the, the, the company in particular, because it's a freeze drying process, the initial part of that process is freezing the food then all of the moisture is taken out of it. So what you can do and what I'm doing already is freezing what I'm going to freeze dry. And so the tomatoes and the squash and a lot of those things that are starting to pile up in my kitchen, I'm already starting to freeze. And then once I've got it all hooked up and tested and ready to go, I can put the trays of frozen harvest right into the freeze dryer and that actually hastens the processing because they're already cold. And so when the machine goes through that free cycle, it actually happens much faster. So I'm already testing that part of it. I'm already chomping at the bit and uh, I appreciate everyone's kind words because I'm looking forward to it as well. Thank you, Joala. So that's John Jude says, small gardeners in my area and YouTube are great. We have similar weather soils and season to plant. Many gardeners in distance, distant areas really known problems we all have. And, and so uh, John raises a good point. And that's one reason why I want to talk about the small YouTube channels today is because all of us, and, and I, I think that's mostly true, but all of us tend to watch the big channels. All of of you obviously are watching the Gardner Scott channel and I do rank as one of the bigger channels but others like Epic Gardening and Self-Sufficient Me for instance, MI Gardener, those are channels that have been around a while and a lot of gardeners watch. But unless you live in San Diego for Epic Gardening or Australia for Self-Sufficient Me or Michigan for MI Gardener, then your climate and how you grow is going to be different. And so while we can learn a lot from gardeners all around the world, as you know, watching my videos, it is nice when we can find some of those smaller channels that may be more like what we're doing and what is happening in your neck of the woods. And there are a lot of channels out there. Now, when I stumble across a small channel or even the larger channels 
I add them to a spreadsheet. And so I've had a spreadsheet for a number of years now. And there are more than 300 gardening channels on that spreadsheet. Most of them are small. Now, for the purposes of our discussion today, I'm going to say 100,000 subscribers is the cutoff. And I know I, we can have lots of discussion about that, but less than 100,000 is really kind of categorized as a small channel. And they, they range, of course, from just a handful of subscribers all the way up to 100,000. But that's how I decided to do the cutoff today. Of the more than 300 channels on my spreadsheet, there's only about 20% that are more than 100,000 subscribers. So about 80% of the channels that I've discovered so far fall into that small channel category. And there's a lot of really good YouTube channels out there that just haven't been discovered yet. I've been doing this for 10 years and it was really Oh, I'd say about six years of making videos before I got discovered and actually started growing and becoming more of a bigger channel. And just the last couple years, my growth has even grown uh, dramatically because you get big, you get bigger. That's kind of the way YouTube does it. You're small, you stay small. That's kind of the way YouTube does it. But that doesn't mean that we can't find some of those small channels and support them in their growth. And so I've said this before, and I know some of you, like Gardens Happen, for instance, have taken on the task, because it is a bit of work, to start making videos. And I think there's lots of reasons for making videos, particularly gardening videos. The reason I started was to document what I was doing in the garden, but also to help out other gardeners with the information. There are hundreds of channels out there that they don't necessarily have the experience or that knowledge to share, but they're sharing what's happening in their garden. They're documenting what they're doing. And that's a great way to learn what you can do in your garden by watching what someone else is doing in their garden. And so if you're at all thinking about making videos for your channel, I say do it. If nothing more than for you to document what is happening in your garden. Make a video for yourself and eventually others will find it. It may be dozens, it may be hundreds, it may be thousands, but your channel really needs to be for you to get started. And almost all of my videos I do make for me. I make them so that I can document what my garden looks like in any given week. And I do it so that I can remember what my thoughts were during a particular time of the season. I think garden journals are very important and I use video as a way to journal what's happening in my garden. And so that's, that's a, a big push that I'd, I'd like to kind of send in your direction as to why you might want to think about starting videos on your channel. Nobody who has half a brain is going to start a YouTube channel and make videos for the purpose of making money. It just doesn't work that way. You've got to be in on YouTube for years and years and years before any money starts trickling in. So don't do it for the money because the money's not there. Do it because you like doing it and because it's a way to keep a record of what you're doing, especially if you have family in other parts of the country or the world. It's a great way for you to document what's happening in your garden so that others can see what's happening in your garden. So over the last couple of weeks, I've actually checked out a lot of you and what you're doing on your channels and whether you've done videos or not. And I'm very pleased to find out that there's a good number of you that are doing exactly that. You're starting to make those garden tour videos and you're showing what you're doing in the garden. So I wanna point out some of you and I encourage all of you to start taking notes and to check out some of the channels that the others that are on 
this community feed right now are doing. And so I mentioned Gardens Happen. So Gardens Happen, uh, last I checked, has nine videos that are uploaded. What's happening in her garden? I think that's fantastic. At 51 subscribers, I think it'd be awesome to double that number today. And we could easily do that. The Stony Gardener has a small channel with just six videos out there. Our Gardening Adventure has 12 videos. These are all channels along with Freaky Gardener who has 19 videos that are just sharing what they're doing. They're not trying to copy me and be the, a, a, a big channel teaching how to garden. No, they're just showing what they're doing. And I think that's outstanding. Brian Siebert's got three videos. Green Leaf Gardening's got 20 videos. Uh, Gardening with Karen looks like just started, just has a couple videos out there. So those, those are just a few that, that I've actually checked out and I encourage that you check out as well. There's others on the list, for instance, um, Coastal Gardening North Wales at 193 videos and over 500 subscribers. That's incredible. Rob's Allotment Channel, 212 videos with 800 subscribers. Both of those, I think we can help out and get up to 1,000 subscribers. And, and that's the point that 1,000 subscribers is kind of that initial threshold that really shows YouTube that you're serious about doing it. But for anyone to make close to 200 videos, even if it's the 200 videos of what's happening in your garden, think about that. I, I don't even think I've made 200 entries in my garden journal. So to make 200 videos of what you're doing, that's, that's a much easier way to journal. That's why I do it, because I'm approaching 400 videos, and that's way more than what I've written into my garden journal, but I'm keeping track of everything I'm doing. So I'll, I'll highlight some others as we roll along, but I just wanted to uh, make a mention for that. Spoon and Sunshine Homestead. I haven't checked you out, but I definitely will. Would love to get to a thousand. There you go. So uh, I'm adding Spoon and with Spoon and with Sunshine Homestead to my list. That's definitely something I'm gonna check out. Family Grows has a family channel. It's new, but shows how we're converting our yard into a food force. Fantastic. I'm gonna check you out as well. And that's another thing that I, another reason why I wanted to um, have this today because I want you all, if you have a channel that I haven't checked out yet and that the others haven't checked out, by all means, let us know about it so that we can go ahead and start sharing some of the the information that we have and what our channels are and start growing. It's one of those things that if, if you find that small channel and then you share that with somebody else, that just helps enlarge the community. Everything that we're doing in the gardening community, I think if we can enlarge the community and help others out along the way, it makes all of us better. Tanya's townhouse garden only has a few videos, got overwhelmed and haven't made one in over a month with a very small garden. And, and there's, that's okay. Um, Tony O'Neill, my buddy from Simplify Gardening, has uh, gone months without making videos. And he's, he's made hundreds of videos. He's been doing it even longer than I've been doing it. And so that's one of those things that you shouldn't feel bad about. Uh, my son actually has a, a beer channel on YouTube, uh, The Brew Captain. And I like it, it's a great channel, but he's married, he has a son, he has a job, he, he's still repairing from a hurricane a year ago. And he hasn't made videos in months either. Now that's okay. The idea is if you do it for yourself, you do a video when you do a video. And if you get serious about it and you you want to be a YouTuber, then yeah, you, it does help to have that, that devoted time every week to maybe release a video or two videos a month or whatever it happens to be. But for now, just, do it when you feel like doing it and, and add to uh, what you like to do so that others can see what you like to do. 
And so Hot Pepper Paul is saying, is there going to be a list compiled of all those smaller channels? So yeah, so when this is all over, and when I, when I get back from my garden, hopefully later today, I'll go ahead and, and put a, a list below of the, the videos or of the channels that I'm mentioning in this video so that you guys can check it out. And uh, Jay, of course, is on top of things by, by putting some of those links as I mentioned some of these videos that, that we'll be talking about. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, Aaron saying, would love to see a good video on growing collard greens. I actually um, was going to grow collard greens this year and got started too late. So I'm not doing a video this year. I am hoping I'm doing video next year. But collard greens, which are ubiquitous in the American South, find one of those small channels in the American South. And no doubt they've got videos on collard greens. Uh, Liza's wondering about small channels in Colorado. I haven't discovered uh, many, if any, other uh, gardening channels in Colorado. There are some channels that I've discovered in Colorado, but not the, the gardening ones here. So Heidi Clark says, I like Plant Abundance Channel too. Um, that's, that's a good one. I, I think I don't have Plant Abundance on my list, but that's actually a channel that I've watched from time to time. And there's another link from Jay for the Spoons and with Sunshine Homestead channel. That's awesome. Leslie says, I would love to make videos, but it seems like an overwhelming project to start. I'm a teacher by nature. Well, then you're, you're ideal for this, Leslie. I, I had lunch with an old friend of mine. I see him about every three years. He lives in Washington State and comes to Colorado on business occasionally. And we'd get together and we were talking about YouTube, of course, not a surprise. I often talk with YouTube with my friends and family because all of us have something to share. And especially if we are teachers, I think, well, that's what YouTube just uh, revels in, the videos that are teaching something. That's what we're all seeking. But you got to start. You just got to do that first video. If you go back to my first videos, and I don't necessarily recommend it, the information is good, but but those videos are are short, they're disjointed, their editing isn't that great. I think some of them are boring, and that's just what you got to do. You've got to start filming, and you release it, and then you learn along the way. One of the things that I discovered is it took me 75 videos before it kind of clicked as to what I really wanted to do and what worked best for me. And so if you watch some of those old videos that were in the first 50, they're not at all like the, the videos that I've been doing in this most recent 50, because it's an evolutionary process. You're learning, you're trying, but you got to make that first video. And don't think that any of your videos are going to become viral. In fact, especially when you're starting off, most of your videos aren't going to get any views other than from your friends and family that you told that you made a video. So don't worry about it. Few people are going to see those first videos anyway. So just do it. And if it's terrible, you can always take it down, but just do it so that you can see if you like doing it. Now, I have some friends who have started channels and after four, five, six videos, they discovered that it was too much work. They really didn't like doing it and they stopped doing it. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that, but I like doing it. And that's why I strongly encourage so many of you to do it, Leslie, because you may find that you really like it. And if you do, whether it's for documenting what's happening in the garden or trying to share with the world that expertise you have, just do it. Just get started. And that's a wonderful way to, to spend your time, especially for those of us that are at or approaching retirement. I find it a great activity to film what I'm already doing in the garden anyway and share it with others. So I uh, hope that helps a little bit. Shandy's Garden says, I still keep saying I'm going to put some up. You should do it. There, there is never a perfect time. You're exactly right. 
In fact, people want to see imperfection, and I know that. Yeah, absolutely. People like seeing people like themselves, and that's that's one of those things about YouTube. If you just tell who you are and show what you're doing, there are going to be a lot of people that find that as well. And so, yeah, I agree. Hugh Richards, I actually, Hugh Richards is another one who's been making videos for years and years and years since he was a kid. And now he's an adult with a beard. And the same with Tony O'Neill. They're big channels now. But both of them, of course, are ones that I follow. And, uh, I, you know, I, I may do a follow-up uh, live stream kind of like this in the months ahead where I'll, I'll talk about some of those bigger channels. But today, the focus is all about small. There you go. Shandy's Garden says, Cog Hill Farm is an Alabama channel. And they love collard greens. So uh, good suggestion. Check out Cog Hill Farm. Dwayne is asking, do you have any favorite books on gardening, even with specific things like tomatoes? Absolutely. In fact, in the description below, I actually have a link to some of my favorite books. And one of them, Epic Tomatoes, is one of my favorite gardening books. So Dwayne, check on that link in the description uh, because you can you can check out some of my favorite books to include that specific one on tomatoes. So um, I was saying Matt Powers is pretty awesome. I'm not, I'm not sure that I know Matt Powers. Bettina, Maritime Gardening in Nova Scotia, yes. And and I Maritime Gardening, that's another one of those good examples. They're in a, a different region. Some of their weather is similar to mine, but, but I like Maritime Gardening's videos as well. So Leslie's asking, where can I find a tutorial on how to post a video? So. Uh, there's a lot of information out there, and this is where you, you can get your notepad out because I was ready for this. If a question wasn't asked, I was gonna be talking about it. How do you get started? There are a lot of channels out there that tell you how to get started. Now, some of the best that I've found that are, are focused on brand new YouTubers are Nick Nimmin. He's been doing this since the beginning of YouTube. Daryl Eves. He is also a guru that YouTube actually consults with when they make changes to, to their software. Think Media is, is really good. They've got lots of good information. Channel Makers is one that I still watch. I watch a lot of that. I'm, I'm watching almost every video comes out. Film Booth, I think, has some of the best production videos on how to do YouTube that's out there. So there's a handful. Uh, places to to start with videos that will tell you how to do videos and how to upload and how to start a channel and things to think about. Now, much of their focus when we talk about like Daryl Leaves and Think Media, they're really trying to help the channels that want subscribers and want a lot of views and want to grow on YouTube. But the basic information is still the same as to how to get started, how to edit, how to upload, how to do those kind of things. So, so that might be kind of a, a good place to start. Uh, I also wanted to highlight some channels. So the ones I highlighted already that I talked about are, are the channels that I saw that are, are garden tour, what I'm doing in the garden kind of videos. But there are some others that, that I think are, are really good that are more focused on the idea of starting the growth, becoming a bigger channel and teaching and guiding uh, in the gardening world. And so uh, Ultimate Gardening, I, I think is a wonderful channel and he's occasionally on with us, not always during the school year because he goes to school. He's made 355 videos. A young kid and I apologize if you don't like being called a kid, but had some great videos with some great information out there. Approaching 3,000 subscribers. I think that's awesome. Check that out. Steve from the Garden has over 100 videos. That's another one to check out. Bowtie Life is one of those channels that's kind of just starting off. Always wears a bow tie, has great information, has made 30 videos, but only has 31 subscribers. That's something you might want to look into. I like Small Garden Quest. 
from Slovenia. He has uh, 67 videos approaching 30, uh, uh, let's say 30,000, 29,000, uh, just over 29, but approaching 30,000 subscribers, still a small channel. The Enthusiastic Gardener is another one that is just showing what she's doing in the garden, but there's always some good information to pick up. She's made almost 300 videos now and is approaching 5,000 uh, subscribers. Green Side Up, a, a, another UK channel. I think that's wonderful. He's got 400 plus videos and is approaching 20,000 subscribers. I really like Sarah's Homestead and Flower Farm from Sweden. She's got over 300 videos with 38,000 subscribers. And, and not only is her information just fantastic, but she makes videos both in English and in Swedish. And so I see the work she does in making her videos and am just amazed at how much effort she's putting into a lot of what she's doing. I like Growfully with Jenna. She's approaching 200 videos with about 85,000 subscribers. Gardens That Matter with 64 videos and 37,000 subscribers. And my favorite that uh, you've heard me talk about before is In the Garden with Eli and Kate. And they have over 200 videos and only 18,000 subscribers. There's, I know a lot of you have checked out that channel and subscribed. And I, I really uh, am hoping that, that she gets good growth because they're, they're serious about helping gardeners and as are the, the other ones I just recently mentioned. And so Eli and I actually correspond uh, on a fairly regular basis. I watch all of their videos and she sent me a note today saying she couldn't be here on the live stream, she's working. But to let you all know that if you want help and what it takes to get a YouTube channel going and growing and doing the teaching and the publishing and all that other work. She offered her her help for any of you that want to contact Eli at In the Garden with Eli and Kate. And that's that's kind of how this works. I helped Eli start growing her channel. And I think as we help each other along the way, it's one of those things that uh, all of us can have the channel that we're looking for, regardless of the size. And we don't all have to be big channels. Just making a channel that somebody watches actually is worthwhile. Rudimental gardening, love making videos and sharing tips and experiences. It's time consuming, so you have to figure out what works best for you. Time magic. Yes, absolutely. And, and, and it, yes, abs I love making videos is a big reason to do it. It is time consuming probably no surprise to you. I spend at least 30 hours a week in the, the prep and the research and the filming and the editing and the uploading and uh, the question answering. And so it is time consuming if you're serious about doing it. And to get big, you got to be serious about doing it, which is why I spend the time. Most of the people out there on YouTube, this isn't their full time job. They have other jobs. Tony O'Neill at Simplify Gardening has a full-time job. And when life gets in the way, sometimes you don't release videos. But like Rudimental Gardening is saying, sharing the tips and experiences and making the videos, I completely agree with you. I, I, I love doing that as well. And so it's one of those things that do what you like. And then it's one of those things that it's not work anymore. I mean, I spend a lot of time doing it but so many of my videos I just I like I like making the video I like the process and when it's done I really like the video the video that I just did that talks about the the mistakes growing tomatoes I love that video I really liked that video for me I I've, I've watched it half a dozen times already as part of the the processing and then going back after it's been released when you like what you do Hopefully others will also like it, but you do it for yourself. That's really the first step and the first way to do it. So uh, Heidi is answering Alex Mack about the food preserving videos. And, and so an, another thing when you start having a lot of those videos and you get into the hundreds is to put your videos into a playlist. 
And so that's what I've done on my channel is I have playlists. So I have a playlist with all my tomato growing videos and I have a playlist with all my food preservation videos. And so, uh, yeah, I do have a lot of food preserving videos and uh, I have a playlist that you can actually go to and see the videos that I've done. And of course, I'll be making a lot more of those videos as we go. Spoon in with Sunshine Homestead. I'm loving sharing my journal with my YouTube channel, but it's so hard getting those 5,000 watch hours. And so what they're referring to, and that's why I say 1,000 subscribers is the threshold. And so the way it works is these small channels on YouTube are only making the videos for themselves. There's no pay. Even if there's commercials and ads in those videos, they don't get anything. When you have a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time on your videos, then you can be monetized so that when YouTube shows an ad on your video, you'll get a cut of it. And it's a fraction of a penny when you get started off. And so that's why I say you don't make videos to make money on YouTube because all those ads you see, the, the people making the videos don't get very much money at all from those ads. But it does add up over time. But you got to get to that thousand subscribers and those 4,000 watch hours to even begin the monetization process. So check out Spoonin' with Sunshine Homestead and let's get them up to that 4,000 hour point. And, you know, it, it's one of those things, quantity does make a difference. It, it's quality. So if you're looking to grow your channel, quality is important. You can't put out a terrible video and expect that people are gonna watch it. And even if you make a really good video, no one may see it. But if you start making a whole bunch of good videos, eventually, people are going to discover you. And that was my strategy in the very beginning, was to make as, as good a video as I could make and know that nobody was going to see it. So that when I got discovered by a viewer, they would see a video and go, oh, I like this guy, or I like this video, or oh, there's some good information there. I wonder what else he talks about. And then they check out my channel page and see that I've got a whole bunch of other videos out there. So my goal almost five years ago now was to make a video a week for an entire year. And that was what I was going to do. As simple as that. 50 videos in a year in the best quality that I could make. And then I was going to do all those extra things to try to grow my channel. And it worked for me because at about the 75 video point, when I really started getting, in my opinion, better and people started discovering my videos, now they had 75 other videos to watch. And I know many of you have binge watched my videos and there's a lot of people that have binge watched my videos and that's helped my growth. So do it one a week, one a month, whatever you can do, but do try to focus on a good quality video, the best that you can do, understanding that when you look back, those first videos aren't gonna be nearly as good as what you learn to do later on. And and it's just, it's just getting started. It's just doing that, that initial, yeah, Greg says watching Hugh Richards is a pleasant experience. His videos are very well made. But when you go back to some of Hugh's videos 12 years ago, when he was a kid in his garden, the videos weren't anything like they are now. He's learned a lot over the years. And and so Hugh Richards is actually, I agree with you, he, he's pleasant to listen to, pleasant to watch. And he's one of those that has learned a lot in his time on uh, YouTube. And there's Ellen saying, I had Film Booth recommended as how to YouTube. Really, really good. Yeah, check out Film Booth. Uh, his videos are just fantastic. The amount of time he puts into his videos uh, are unlike anybody else out there that's telling you how to make videos. Film Booth is, is definitely a way to do it. So, okay, let's see. I know I'm falling behind, so I'm going to go ahead and scroll up. Jess is saying, 
I'd love to start my own channel and social media platform, but I have no experience in front of a video camera. Got to practice, I suppose. Yeah, the only way to get experience is to do it. And so you can make videos. You don't, you don't have to release your video to YouTube. Make a video, see how you do with the process. If you like it, put it on YouTube. If you don't like it, make another video. Don't be too critical of yourself and have that delay you or stop you from posting on YouTube. But don't worry about it. Very few of us have experience in front of a camera. And so your first experience in front of a camera may be on YouTube. And so it's one of those things that uh, use YouTube as the, the practice area to get better on the, um, on the making of videos. Shandy's Garden, Roots and Refuge, my first love. They become huge and started just by filming tours uh, exactly as a journal. And now they're in their forever form. Roots and Refuge, I've been following for years as well. And same kind of thing. Yeah, that's, you know, she started just sitting in her greenhouse, having a cup of coffee, walking through the garden, talking about the animals and the plants. A lot of the, the information that she presents is, is extremely educational and in, in, in her earlier videos. And it's become more of a vlog as to what they're doing. And so they've evolved where she started off as an instructor telling how and showing how to do things. And it's become more of a, you know, personal journey with Jess to see what they're doing, especially when they made their move to their, their new farm. Hundreds of thousands of people were following along. So yeah, they just started small journaling what they're doing. And now they're, they're a really, really big channel with a lot of big fans. So uh, just get started. <laughs> just walking through the garden is one of those great ways to, to get started. Okay, let's see. Uh, just says lead farmer 73 for the Carolinas. I uh, don't know that channel. And there's a lot of good survival stuff out there. So, uh, you know, I've been doing more and more survival garden videos because I do think there's a good connection with what people are doing and what they need to be doing. So um, Britt Lee's wondering, how do you know what topics to do that aren't already known? That's where I struggle thinking people already know what I do. Um, it's, it's very difficult for you to come up with an idea that nobody has done. I spend a lot of time on that. And that's one reason why some of my videos are so successful because there's nobody else out there doing what I'm doing in some of my videos. A lot of the videos I make in that, that genre, so to speak, nobody watches. Well, I won't say nobody, but not a lot of people watch because it's not something a lot of people are looking for. Three years ago, I made a video on how to prune lilacs. It's one of the only videos on how to prune lilacs and it's got about 400,000 views now. I just make videos about what I think people would want to know that I can't find a video about. That's how I approach it. And so while you may think that what you want to do videos about are already being made, and that's true. You know, when I make a video on how to prune tomatoes, there's a bunch of videos out there on how to prune tomatoes. And when I make a video on raised beds, there's a whole bunch of videos on raised beds. But I do my own approach. It's me telling the story. It's me sharing my information, not somebody else's information. And so when you watch a tomato video or a raised bed video or a canning video or whatever it is on the Gardner Scott channel, it's Gardner Scott talking to you about that subject. And that's that's how I think you should maybe think about this, Britt. You don't have to give new information. You just have to give the information that Britt Lee has and then let others discover you. It, it doesn't need to be a copy and you shouldn't do a copy. It's the copies that don't have success. You know, there's that really successful YouTube video and then a thousand people make a copy of that and they're never as good as the original. Just be yourself. Whatever the topic happens to be, no doubt you can find something new about it. So for instance, I just got my new freeze dryer. I made a video about it this weekend and I released it. Now, 
there are dozens of videos out there of people getting their harvest right, freeze dryer, and unboxing it and talking about it. What made me unique is that it was a progression. I've spent years waiting to get a freeze dryer. And so I talked about that in the video. I talked about how I started canning and I started making jelly and I dehydrated and I, I do all of these different food processing things. And so it's a natural progression for me to now move into freeze drying. That was unique. I haven't seen anybody else talk about it. It wasn't anything special. It was just Gardner Scott talking about what a freeze dryer means to me. That's how you can approach it. What makes whatever your video is about unique to you? And that's how you should make your videos. And so don't, don't struggle, Britt, about trying to think of something that people don't know because chances are there's already a video out there about whatever the subject is. Just add your little piece to it. And I think it's one of those things that, you, that you'll enjoy. Uh, Laya Anda, Gardening in Canada is great. She's a soil scientist. I really like her. And I didn't include her on my list um, because I'm actually hoping to highlight her in other ways in the future. She's a soil scientist. And I love videos on, and channels that really talk about the science behind what is happening in the garden. And so I completely agree with you. Gardening in Canada is a wonderful channel. And I watch a lot of what she does and uh, really enjoy. And she's, she's growing and her videos are getting better too. And always lots of good information on that. So that's a good one. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, Shandy's Garden, of course, Kate and Eli. Charles Dowding is a big channel now. Jess at Plot 37 is, is really good. Uh, you know, again, one of those what's happening in the garden and along the way you might learn some stuff. So Jess at Plot 37 has, has got some good information in there as well. So, uh, so, so glad to see so many of you sharing some of your favorite channels. And uh, yeah, Dolly, I'll... I'll be posting the channels that we've been talking about when I do a follow-up when this is all over today. And hopefully we'll be able to, to increase their audiences. Gardens Happens wondering, do you remake any of your older videos that didn't get to views now that you're big? Uh, yes. I don't necessarily remake them, but now that I've got almost 400 videos, what I'm finding is that as I come up with ideas and 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 the list of the videos that I'm planning to make, it turns out that I already made that video years ago. And so in that case, I'll review what I said years ago to make sure that that if if my my methods have changed, that I highlight that the methods have changed or that I don't say something too different from the way I said it before. So I don't choose videos to remake, but I'm discovering as I'm, I'm, I'm covering subjects like tomatoes, for instance. Uh, I, I did a video a couple years ago where I talked about making mistakes growing tomatoes. And the video that I just did this last week is a different video. So it isn't that it's a remake, but there is some material in both of them that is the same. And so you can approach it that way. I do, I do know of channels and actually some of those gurus will often suggest once you get better, go ahead and remake your videos. Because when we get started, we often choose the best subject possible to make a video on and we make it when our skills are not developed yet. And so when your skills develop, then yeah, by all means, go back and remake that video that you thought was a great idea and make it better. And so that's kind of how I approach it. Uh, it's, it's more by accident than on purpose, but, but there are some of my newer videos that are similar to some of my older videos and uh, I'm okay with that. I don't delete the older videos. That's a choice. You can either remake and get rid of the, the first one or not. 
I actually like to see the progression I've made. And I think some of you like it too. I know some of you have actually started in the beginning and binge watched the videos. And I have no doubt that you can see the progression I've made over the years. And that's why I leave them on. It's not just for me, but for your enjoyment as well. So that you can see the young Gardner Scott and compare that to the old Gardner Scott. And so uh, it, a lot of it does come down to views as you're asking about and and so when you get to that point where the views become more important then you might consider remaking but other than that i i wouldn't worry too much about it just make the videos you want to make at the time that you want to make them and i think then everything will be good uh, bettina likes liz zorab uh, from blyther farm yeah i like liz too liz actually uh, i believe is friends with tony o'neill and i think they've done some collab videos but Liz has got some great information and some good videos out there as well. So that's another one. Uh, Jess is wondering, how do you feel about investing in an actual camera before beginning? I only have my old iPhone camera. There are, are many channels out there that only use an iPhone. iPhone's got a great camera. Uh, I occasionally use the iPhone for some footage when I shoot a video. And you can't even tell the difference between my Lumix uh, SLR and my iPhone. Uh, it, it all comes out the same. So don't let that stop you. My son's channel, what he's got, I think he's got like 35 or 36 videos. They've all been shot on his camera uh, or his GoPro, or uh, not his camera, on his phone or with a GoPro. And so don't let that limit you at all. Uh, that, that should not be a limiting factor. If you get serious about it, then you can upgrade and get a nice camera and get a a wireless microphone like I have, but that's that's nothing you really need to, to worry about. My first videos, I don't have a microphone. I'm yelling at the camera outside so that you can hear me. And and it, it's an old, for my first videos were old video cameras, not even the quality of an iPhone. So uh, just do it, just get out there and do it and don't worry too much about the equipment. That's one of those things that, that uh, the equipment will follow if that's something that you decide you want to do you just got to get started just get out there and get started and you'll have fun with it so uh let's see yeah jay's right on top of things i know i'm behind in the comments but i'm going to go ahead and try to pass through some i'm just trying to see some of the channels that you all have suggested James is wondering, how much scripted drama should I add to my reality garden videos? Well, I think so much of our, our garden produces rea reality that ends up being drama. You know, I've got those videos on what went wrong in the garden. And when the, the weather devastates your garden, you can't script those. That's just nature writing the script for you. Uh, but it comes down to what you want to do. I don't script my videos, but I... I, I, I plot out what I'm going to do and I write it out in order of where my shots are going to be and what I'm going to say. And then I film it. And then I watch what I film. And if it's not exactly what I wanted to say, then I film it again. That's another one of those things when you're serious about making the videos. It's different than just a walk through. When you walk through your garden and you're doing one long take, you can say whatever you want to say and you point out the flowers and you do all the 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 discussion of the, the the bees and the butterflies and whatever's happening in your garden that's easy and and almost all of us can do that but when you do a video where you're instructing and you want to make sure the information is accurate don't be afraid to do multiple takes and so there are some times where i'll film 12 15 even 20 times to get the one shot that you see in the video. That's where the work comes in. I don't get it right every single time. I make it look like I do, but I don't. That's what the editing is all about. And so as far as scripted drama, well, watch watch my, my video on uh, zombies in the garden. That was close to scripted to make sure I added the drama of what to do with the zombies in your garden. That's a video I did back on April 1st. So sometimes I will script for drama, but most of the time I, I think the garden is dramatic enough that you don't need to, 
to worry about it. So, okay, let's see. Uh, thank you, Sunset Gazing. I appreciate that. Uh, videos are A++. I, I really appreciate that. And I do have the heart of a teacher. And that's why I do this. I just, I love teaching. I, I've taught for in one way or another for years and years and years. And this is a great outlet. Te people who are teachers love to teach. And so why not film it and share it with others? Particularly if you've got the good information that, that you can share with others out there. Shandy's Garden, I already have a first dozen videos all written out and planned in the notebook. Awesome. Taping things, taking things I love from a lot of channels and implementing that style. I am who I am because of those people. Awesome. Well, I look forward to, to seeing those dozen videos and, and what you uh, want to share with us. But put it on film. Get it out there. Make it happen. James says, my wife used to watch a YouTuber that ate old military rations. It was strangely relaxing and interesting. Sometimes it's more about the feel than the content. Absolutely. You know, I, I know many of you watch my channel because of the feel. Yeah, the content is good. But I have a lot of people comment that they just like listening to my videos. You know, and I know people who actually listen to my videos before they go to sleep because they find my voice soothing. And I appreciate that. And it is about the feel. Now, I try to focus as much as possible on the content. But yes, there's definitely a feel to videos and to your channel and to what you choose to do on your channel in your videos. Take full advantage of that. If, if you are a joke teller, then tell jokes in your videos. If there is a particular trait that you enjoy about yourself, then make note of that. Bo bow tie life, I think is great. He obviously loves wearing bow ties, and that's what he's done with his channel. Just a few videos, but he's already starting off by developing his image, his brand, his persona by wearing a bow tie in his videos. So whatever it happens to be, if if you have red hair, you might want to make that something about your, your image on camera as you highlight your red hair or whatever it happens to be. The clothes you wear, the, the you know, James Prigioni's channel, he's got Tuck. Tuck, his dog, is a big part of his videos. That's all part of how you should think about progressing. What makes you comfortable? What helps identify who you are? And that's a good way to move forward if you have any questions or doubts of how you should move forward. Just be yourself. I, I, I have a friend who uh, was starting a channel and he was worried about what people would think about him. So he developed this persona that wasn't him in his videos to include a completely different name. Well, he no longer does that. He doesn't have a channel anymore. I think it was just too difficult maintaining that persona that wasn't him with that different name that it wasn't worth the effort anymore. I think if he had just stayed true to himself, he might still be doing YouTube. Don't know. He, he didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoy it. I think part of that was because he wasn't being himself. Be yourself. That's the easiest way to do it. Then you don't have to think. You don't have to script what you're saying. You can just talk and just be who you are. Okay, let's see what we're talking about. Alex Mack says, um, can use it as a podcast, even when I'm doing something most of the time when I hear your channel. So, yeah, uh, appreciate that, Alex. Yeah, I, I do like that viewers, some of you, listen to this and this live stream and the other videos I do while they're gardening. I listen to podcasts when I garden. And so for me, it's one of those, wow, that's great to actually be listening to a gardening podcast while you're gardening. It doesn't get much better than that. And so, yeah, if it's Gardener Scout you're listening to while you're gardening, I think that's awesome. I think that's fantastic. Hi, Yankee sister. I love watching Gardener Scott. One of the first channels I subbed two years ago. I appreciate that. <clears throat> and you're one of my favorite commenters. I, I just love having you all the time. Thanks so much. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to catch up. I know I probably missed a lot of stuff. 
Um, Rob's Allotment Channel says, I did an April Fool's video on a spaghetti bush. I did an April Fool's video on how to grow spaghetti. There you go. Great minds think alike. So I haven't seen that, Rob. I'll have to check it out. That's another thing. To, and so, again, you got you to gotta have fun. You got to be true to yourself. You got to enjoy it. I enjoy making my April Fool's Day videos. I've done it for three years now. It's ironic because my lowest performing videos, as far as the thumbs up versus thumbs down, are my April Fool's videos. Of, of the viewers, more people don't like my April Fool's videos than any other video I do. And I think it's because people expect gardeners got to be serious and to give information that they can use in their garden. And so when I come out with a silly video, it's not what they're expecting of me and they give me a thumbs down. Well, you know what? I don't care. I'm making videos that I want to make to include April Fool's videos. And I know every year that I make an April Fool's video, I'm going to get a lot of thumbs downs because it's not what people want from me. There is a certain component where you have to keep your viewers happy, but you got to keep yourself happy too. So yeah, watch my April Fool's videos, give it a thumbs up, watch Rob's, give him a thumbs up because that's that's what you got to do. You got to keep yourself happy. You can't please everybody and not even sometimes. I try to, to do what I can for most people most of the time because gardening does tend to be pretty general as, as the information is shared by all of us. Uh, but I, I am specific at times and, and I do go outside the normal gardener Scott expectations from time to time. And I know that, that disturbs some of the viewers. I'm going to continue to do that because that's who I am. And that's kind of what you have to do. So yeah, I agree with Paul, the humor's deadpan. And, and I agree. I, I, I present my funny videos the same way I present the serious videos. And I think that's one reason why I get a thumbs down because I fool some of the viewers on those April Fool's channels. So, uh, yeah, Rob says his went down like a lead balloon. Exactly. So, but I do appreciate you garden dilemma. And, uh, I, I appreciate that, that you like the, the April Fool's videos along with Gretchen. So, uh, you're, you're the true believers. You're the followers along with Heidi as well. And so, uh, keep watching the videos. And that's one of those things. Uh, yeah, Michael raises a good point. I rarely give a thumbs down to anyone. I just move on. I i don't think I've ever given a thumbs down on a video. I know I have some trolls and I know that there are, are like five people out there just working the math. There are like five people that give a thumbs down on every single one of my videos. And that's it. You know, all of the other are thumbs up. There's only like, like five that I get thumbs down in this every video. Fine. I don't know who they are. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't bother me that they're there because they're still watching my video to give a thumbs down whatever you know hopefully they're they're learning something while they're giving me a thumbs down but to the point uh be supportive especially of the little channels if you're starting off you're going to realize how difficult it is to put up with youtube and the comments and the views and all the rest of it so as a viewer, particularly of a lot of these small channels that we're talking about today, be polite. If you like something, comment on it. If you don't like it, you don't need to leave a comment and you don't need to leave a thumbs down. But a thumbs up and a comment are always welcome. And especially if it's good enough that you like and want to subscribe, absolutely. But I know a whole bunch of you, most of you that are watching today, don't subscribe to my channel. That's okay. I get it. There's a lot of channels I like that I don't subscribe to, but particularly for the smaller channels who are hoping to get monetized, subscribing is a way to help out those smaller channels. For the big channels like mine, I'm at almost 315,000 subscribers. Would it be nice to be at 320,000? Sure but I don't lose sleep over it. And I'm not actively seeking new subscribers. I'm seeking the gardeners who want to become better gardeners. 
And if they do that by watching my videos, it doesn't matter whether you're a, a subscriber or not. I just want to give the information to you. So that's my approach. Others are all about getting the subscribers. That's fine for them too. You will have to decide which approach you want to take. You got to have subscribers to grow, but you can still get a lot out of the experience without having the subscribers. So think about that as you approach. Now, while I'm thinking about it, and before I forget, I want to talk about the background today. This was sent to me a couple months ago from Yvette in the Netherlands. And so uh, this is a beautiful garden. This garden is two meters by five meters big. And as you can see, as you look across the street, it's on a balcony that overlooks a street, but it's beautiful. It's a wonderful garden. And so often I highlight the big gardens, especially the, the gardens in the US where we have lots of space to spread out, but you can have a beautiful garden in a small space. Look, here's a tree right here. Here's a fruit tree back here. There are pots. And if you look back over here, you can see there's a lot growing behind me. There's a nice little trellis with some vines growing up the wall, a birdhouse. There's a window box. You got your flowers growing. You got your herbs growing over here. There's a lot happening in a small space. And so I always suggest if you're new to gardening, start off small. That way you don't get too overwhelmed. But I look at this small space and think, wow, this is overwhelming. There's a lot of plants here. There's a lot of planning and, and work and effort that's necessary to keep it looking so great. And so uh, the, the Netherlands uh, can be a challenging environment uh, in, that, in the northern regions of Europe, but it, it's absolutely beautiful. Now they can, they can grow things that I can't grow. My winters get much colder than it gets in the Netherlands, but th there's some, some harsh weather in that part of the world. And especially when you're on a balcony and exposed to the wind and the weather, you really have to think about what you're doing. And I'm sure there are challenges associated with this garden. But I wanted to share it because I think it's a beautiful space to show that what some of us think is a limitation, not enough space, others see as an opportunity to figure out how to do it and then just pack the plants in. And of course, you've got your umbrella and a sitting spot out here. So I'm, I'm sure that she sits out here in the evening to just enjoy this, this space. And so um, they're, they're, it, it's just, it calms me looking at it. I can, I can so imagine sitting in this garden space with the insects and probably the birds and the butterflies flitting around at different times of the year. So thank you, Yvette, for sharing this. I think it's a wonderful picture, and, and I hope you see this in the replay because it's late in the evening there. But uh, thank you for sharing. It's a few, Like I said, she sent it a few months ago, but it is something that I wanted to share and get you all thinking about. So, okay, let's go ahead and get back to the subject at hand with Robin's Container Garden. I started my channel because I couldn't find videos on gardening in containers. I wanted to help others who were looking for information just like me. Good for you. That's a great reason to start a channel. That was a big reason why I, I started my channel years ago, because I was discovering that there wasn't a lot of information out there that I thought was good information. There's a lot of bad information. So I wanted to be one that was presenting good information. And I ended up presenting a broad array of information. When you're starting a channel, the gurus suggest that you do exactly what Robin's doing. You specialize, you pick a subject and highlight that subject. And, and, and it's, it's identifying that niche, that, that niche that isn't being effectively used and you can find a place in it. 
if you copy what's already being done, no one's going to see your videos. But you're right. There's not a lot out there on container gardening. So if you can kind of own that space, then people are looking for what? Gee, I've got this question about container gardens. Oh, I'll go to Robin's Container Garden channel and get information because I always get good information there. That's a great approach. So I'm glad that you have have taken that approach because that that is a, a really good way to do it. Um, a channel that used to be uh, a small channel, I now consider a big channel because he's crossed that threshold, is Pepper Geek. I really like Pepper Geek as, as a channel. All he talks about is peppers, mostly hot peppers. He's, he's carved out that niche where in this gardening world with so much information, rather than doing it like Gardener Scott where I cover everything from pruning lilacs to growing in a green stock to canning your your produce to making jelly to tomato problems to 400 videos worth of, of information i'm taking the general approach focusing on an area that you can become big in that small area is a great way to approach the the way you you garden and and hopefully have some success with it Yankee Sista saying, still trying to find my niche on the channel, but I love sharing my garden with everyone. There you go. And, and that's that's a big part of, of, like I've been saying all along, is there's so many of you are doing exactly that, just sharing your garden because you're proud of it, because you like it, and because you like doing it. So um, if, if you want some help, Yankee Sista, contact me, and I will gladly help you out. You can... You can send me a note at gardenerscott at gardenerscott.com and maybe I can help you discover your niche niche if you want to take that approach. But uh, just keep what, doing what you're doing and I think that is a wonderful way to approach it. Thanks, Jay. There's the pepper geek. Okay, let's see. Uh, scrolling down, I got waylaid again. Oh, Dirty Dog Farm. Just got your first green stock. Good for you. I think that's one of those things that uh, should be highlighted with exclamation points and talked about. So good for you. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I, so uh, I'm trying to figure out how to put it into a video. It'll probably come out next year with some of the things that you can do in your green stock. So I'll just throw this out, out to all of you as I'm talking about general gardening information. And one of the ways I use my green stock this year is for seed saving. And so I am growing beans, the rattlesnake beans, in my green stock for the purpose of saving the seeds. Now, in my garden, I've got other kinds of beans. I've got the burgundy beans, and I've got the rattlesnake beans, and a couple other different type of beans. And there was the possibility for cross-pollination with all those beans I'm growing in my main garden area. So I grew beans that I wanted to save the seeds from in my green stock. And I'm doing the same thing with shishito peppers. I'm growing shishito peppers in my green stock for the purpose of not only harvesting some just outside my kitchen door and eating them, then they're delicious, but also saving the seeds so that there's less risk of the cross-pollination with all the pepper plants in my main garden that's about 100, 150 feet away. So... Uh, Throw that out at you as a green stock tip for how you could use your green stock if you have a garden that's a little bit farther from your house. Avoid the cross-pollination concerns, or at least reduce the cross-pollination concerns by growing some of those plants in a green stock that you want to save the seeds from. And um, it's been working out for me so far. So let's see. Um, spooning with sunshine says I started my channel is kind of like a visual therapy. Good for you. That's a good good approach. Doing what I love. I'm a retired law enforcement officer. My hubby and I talk about gardening, self defense, and safety on our channel. Awesome. And and so uh, I think that's great. I think that's fantastic. One of the things about growing a big channel is you is if you take that approach, it helps to specialize so that you you have a focus on the gardening or you have a focus on the self-defense and safety, and that'll help those loyal viewers stay with you. 
because if you have those viewers that want to watch the gardening stuff and then your next video is about the self-defense and safety, well, they're not going to watch that video and they might leave your channel. And so the recommendation is to grow your channel, you should specialize in a particular subject area. But for therapy and doing what you like doing, you're not limited by that at all. So keep doing what you like doing and he'll definitely have fun with it. So, yay, Dixon, subscribe to Yankee Sister Homestead. Good for you. And all, all of this stuff, like I was saying earlier, subscribing just shows a little bit of love to those channels that, that you like. And uh, might give them a little leg up when it comes to getting some of the views. And what's, what's, what's bad about getting views? If you're making videos to get views, an extra view helps, right? So get as many views as you can. Heidi says, I want to get a green stock, but I'm worried what to do with it in the winter in zone 7A. You can actually do a lot more with your green stock in 7 than I can do in my 5. And so I just accept that there's nothing I can do with my green stock during the winter. But as I showed in a recent video, you can get a green stock and you can get the covers for the green stock. And that adds some protection. And so you might be able to to do a lot, uh, maybe not in the depth of winter, Heidi, but for definitely longer in autumn and earlier in spring than I can. And I'm growing a lot of stuff, you know, everything from lettuce and basil to the shishito peppers and the beans. Right now I've got the peas that are just starting because they're moving into the fall garden in my green stock. And I'm planning on using the covers on the green stock when the weather starts getting cold so that I can get that fall harvest. You, you've probably got at least a month longer than me before the weather gets bad that you couldn't do it. So um, don't be worried at all about it, Heidi. You know enough about gardening and have enough experience that, that you'll be able to figure it out and actually make it work to your advantage. So go with it. And I think it's something you should definitely think about it. And I always have, for those of you that might be interested in the green stock, I always have that link in the description below. Because if you use the Gardener Scott code, you can get $10 off. And anytime you can save money, I, I say save money. <laughs> I, I take advantage of the coupons all the time whenever I see them. So might as well take advantage of that. Um, Robin's Container Garden says, we message from our mutual pal, Eli, just to let folks know who want to contact Eli for any help with making videos or about how to YouTube, just message her. So uh, yeah, and I, I mentioned that earlier. Uh, she had sent me an email and said the same thing. She's she is a gem, and uh, I I I just love watching her. She's got it, such a great personality on her videos, which is why I always talk about in the garden with Eli and Kate because it is a small channel that deserves to be a big channel, and and they will someday. You know, you gotta you gotta spend some time with it. You know, like I said, ten years for me, close to fifteen years for Tony and Simplified Gardening. I think Hugh. Uh, has been doing it for at least 15 years. And so it takes a while to get big, but when you enjoy it along the way, the time flies. And then suddenly you're a big channel and you realize, wow, I've been doing this for 10 years. Oh, yeah, because it was fun all the way along the way. So thanks, Jay. You are so awesome. Always on top of it. There's that code and that link to, to get that $10 discount on the the green stock, a nice way to do it. So, uh, okay, let's see. I want to make sure I'm trying to see if there's any other channels that have been mentioned recently that I don't want to miss. Um, but I will go back and try to put in the description for those of you on a replay or for the rest of you that are watching live, come back in a couple days and hopefully by then I'll have... Um, uh, the channels that we've been talking about in the description and there's going to be a long list of them so be ready for that and check out as as many as you can so uh let's say i know jess has been talking been sharing a lot of channels so i think that's fantastic so uh okay let's go ahead and let's see if there's anything else um gardening in alaska okay there you go there, there are a few channel, few channels out there, some Alaska vid channels out there. There's a lot of Canadian channels that I, 
I like as well. So if you can find the ones that you like, definitely go with it. Idaho Gardener, don't worry about being late. Have a small channel, but only for video and slideshow purposes to look back on and remember. And we talked about that. So if you catch up with us in replay, that's one of those reasons I talked about early on for why you should have a channel. But um, cooler here in Southwest Idaho. So wonderful, but glad that you have a channel that's public and we'll definitely add you to the list so that people can check out. And, and again, remember, uh, like I said earlier about the comments and the thumbs down, it takes a lot. Actually, it takes some courage to release that first video and put it out there for the world. Literally, anyone in the world can see your video. It, it takes a lot to, to make that step. And there are people out there who don't have the camera production experience and they don't have that on-screen personality. It's just a person making a video about their garden. And so enjoy that for what it's worth. And it may be something you like, maybe something you don't like, maybe something you want to subscribe to, maybe not. But just by making the effort to check out some of these channels is great because you may discover that gem that is, is something that you can use on your gardening journey. And even some of those little channels that are, are showing what they're doing and sometimes the information is not necessarily the best gardening advice, but that's what they're doing. That's a great way to learn too. I've said this before. When you can hear someone tell you how to garden and it makes you question how you garden, it now forces you to learn more about how you garden. And so I watch videos all the time and someone will make a comment and it's like, wait, what? No, that's not the way you do it. But then I start second guessing myself and thinking, well, if that's what they're doing, is there something that I'm missing? And it forces me to research or look into what it was I'm doing. And in most of the time, it's like, okay, yeah, I'm doing it right. They're the one that's passing some faulty information, but that's what they're doing. It works for them. So for them, it's good information, but it helps me reinforce what I'm doing and the reasons behind why I do what I do when I see that. And so don't worry too much. If the information you see out there isn't the best, it may lead you to find the information that is indeed best and that'll help you on your journey. So that's, that's really one of the ways that I, I like to approach it and why I watch so many channels that are out there. Mary says some popular channels out there do forget that they were once small, so don't be like them. Yeah, I agree. And and I struggle with that. It's a challenge to, to avoid that. I was just thinking about that the other day. So many, most of the big channels have a team. They're sending their video out. Actually, their video is being filmed by somebody else. They send it out to be edited by somebody else. And they have a team that that works their channel. That's great because when you get really big and you have that team working for you, you can become a full time YouTuber. And that's why they do it. And, and I don't don't want that to sound like it's a bad thing. But for me, I shoot all my own videos. I edit all my own videos. I come up with all the planning and the prep for all my own videos and I answer all the questions that are being asked on my videos, I still do that. I still reply to comments because I'm, I don't want to become that big YouTuber that ignores where he came from. Granted, the bigger I get, I do have to modify some of what I'm doing to maintain the audience and to get more audience. But just be aware that I'm doing all I can to avoid being that YouTuber that ignores and forgets where he came from, because I, don't, I agree with you. I, I, I don't like seeing that as well. And some of those channels I just don't follow anymore because I recognize that they're only making videos to get views. I make videos because the videos need to be made. And I, I make videos that I know aren't going to get that many views, 
but I also know that for those of you that are following along with all these videos, that that video that might only get a fraction of some of my other videos fits in the library. It's a piece of information that no one else is presenting, like we were talking about earlier. I try to present that information that no one else is willing to present. A video that I'm going to start filming today is going to be about rhubarb. How to harvest and use rhubarb to include making rhubarb jelly. Now, I challenge you. When was the last time you saw a video from a big channel that talked about making rhubarb jelly? My guess is never, because as far as I can tell, this is going to be the first video like this out there. It's not going to get hundreds of thousands of views because there aren't hundreds of thousands of people that are probably interested in rhubarb. But for those of you who grow rhubarb and are interested in how to harvest and use it, you'll watch my video. That's the approach I take, is making videos that fit in the Gardner Scott library. And if they get views, great. If they don't get views, I'm okay with that. If one person decides to make rhubarb jelly and then they discover how delicious it is, then my job is done. That's how I approach my videos. If one person benefits from a video I make, I'm happy. I know, luckily, that thousands of people often benefit from my videos, but I'm really only after that one person. And that one person may be you. You never know. That's why I keep doing it. Yankee Sista, I owe a great deal of gratitude to you. I always feel your compassion for teaching and knowledge. Thank you all. Thank you for that. Super chat, Yankee Sista. I really appreciate you as well. And 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 somebody I noticed, a couple of people last week, I think, were asking about the super chats because Yankee Sista, every week that she's here with us, gives me a super chat in the com or in the chat section. And it should work either on mobile or on PC. Uh, there's a little dollar sign. Now, I'm not sure if it's a dollar sign or if it's just a currency sign in other countries. I'm not real sure about that. But when you click on that, that's what takes you to the, the window where you can do a super chat or a super sticker or whatever donation that you, you want to do. And, and so I, I appreciate that, Yankee uh, Sister, as a, a way to just show your appreciation. It is something that that really does mean a lot to me and I do greatly appreciate it. So thank you so much for that. Tina Marziliano, a new member. That's another thing you can do. Click on the join and become a member of the Gardner Scott community. So um, that's awesome. I hope you, you uh, join us on Facebook and some of those other perks. There's going to be a members only live stream coming up later this week and I'll be sending information out about that in the community section um, on the um, members only community section on my channel page. So look for that. And so uh, as all of this, as we talk about making videos, watching videos, I think it's, it's, it's sharing what we have in the gardening community, uh, sharing our knowledge, sharing our interest, sharing our support, which is, I, I think is an extremely important. But I also, especially this time of year, for those of us that, that the gardens are starting to, to fade and we're, and we're starting to collect seed, I want to give a shout out to Seeds in the Garden and sharing your seeds. I have my garden club meeting coming up this Saturday and we're doing a seed swap and we'll be doing it again next week. And I think it's just a great opportunity, like I said at the very beginning, whether it's plants that you share or seeds that you share, if you can actually share a physical part of your garden with someone, then your garden continues living and, and could essentially live forever because you share with someone and then they share that plant and they share. And so the plant you started with, who knows where it'll be. My daughter grows strawberries from the strawberry plants that I gave her years ago. And I know she has shared some of the strawberries with some of her neighbors. And so strawberries that I grew have a gen genetic link to other strawberries all over the place. I think that's awesome to just think about how you can be part of a spread like that. 
Kate shared some seeds with me, some leek seeds this last year, and I'm growing leeks this year from those seeds that she shared. She also shared information about the shalili garlic, which I'd never heard of before. And so that information share caused me to order some more garlic. I love the garlic I've been growing. I'm always looking for new garlic. And she, after the, the garlic live stream that I did, said, hey, have you tried these garlics? Well, I hadn't. And now I will because that information was shared with me. I certainly don't know everything about gardening. I'm always looking for new things. The video I did last year where I had what I thought were my top five cherry tomatoes, well, so many of you said, oh, you need to try the black cherry tomato. I said, yes, I need to try it. And Frank shared black cherry seeds with me, and now I'm growing the black cherry tomato. That's one of those things about our gardening community that I think is so awesome that we can share what we like. And then as a gardener, we can accept that with gratitude beyond measure because now we can put it in our garden and we can keep that, that sharing alive and continuing. Because I have no doubt I'll be saving black cherry tomato seeds and I'll be sharing those black cherry tomato seeds with my garden club next year. That's kind of the way I think we all should think about gardening. What can we share with others? Today's focus was the channel on YouTube. What can you do to share what you have, your garden, your knowledge, your enthusiasm, your desires? You can share those in a video on YouTube. Now, take it that next step further. What else do you have that you can share with those around you? The seeds, the plants, the produce, whatever it is, share. I've given away almost all of my harvest this year because I just had more than I could eat. Now that I have my freeze dryer, I'm going to be preserving a lot more of it. But I've been making jams and jellies, and I've been dehydrating, and I've been doing some canning, and I've been doing some pickling. The pickles that I'd made recently, the feedback was it was the best pickle I'd ever made. I've been making pickles for almost 20 years. And now to discover this year that that recipe that I discovered is being touted as the best ever, how great is that? I wouldn't have known that unless I had shared my pickles with a loved one. So there's so much more about gardening than just getting your fingers dirty. It's what you do with the gardening. And I encourage all of you to do as much as you can with what you have in your garden and why you're gardening. And if it means starting a channel, do it. If it means making a video, do it. If it means saving some seeds, do it. Whatever makes you happy and that allows you to share that happiness, do it. I'll be back next Monday. We'll have another topic. I thank you so much for all the information you've shared. I look forward to seeing some of the channels I haven't seen before. And we'll just keep having fun on our, our gardening journey every Monday. Hope to see you there. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.